and we're back. Kim, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Jean? I'm well, thanks. I want to start today our show with some viewer comments. And I had a woman who contacted me and she says, you know, one of the things that I really want to tell people when they start Whole Food Plant Based, because when I started, I just started doing all these incredible recipes and you go look for all of these intense things. And she says, what I want to tell people, what I want to share people is to keep it simple. It's true. So what do, you, what do you do to keep things simple at the Campbell household? Well, I, I talked about this before, but double up, double up everything because it's just the two of us now. So I, and I tend to, I like to cook, so I cook a lot. So save it, freeze it, bag it up. You know, if you're making something dry, then, then double it up. I can't stress enough the importance mm. of doing that. And then always having your pantry items on hand. And in the well, cookbook, I have the basic items, but you know, I, I just never really let those run out. Things like vinegars and spices and right. the condiments, always have them there. And well, I like putting up a, a grocery list, you know, and, exactly. and having a check off stuff. And, and I know you shared your chalkboard in the backward background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I use it all the time. I, I clean, I clean it off. Just every time I talk to you, I clean it off. <laughs> But it's usually it nice. full of all kinds of stuff. Okay. So, you know, just, you're right. Keeping it really simple, not overcomplicating things, finding those recipes that you yeah. like, not, you know, not venturing into really unusual foods to start with, but just starting with what you know. If you like spaghetti and veggie balls, then make spaghetti and veggie balls. Right. You know, stick with the things that you know how to cook already and make them plant-based, which is what you and I are doing with some of these recipes. It's really fun. It is. It's, yeah. And I can't wait to see what we got coming up but I like to batch cook I batch cook on the weekends and I always make a pot of rice a pot of beans I usually have potatoes I just take the potatoes I scrub them put them into the pot whole and then I'll take them out and I'm using them now in my air fryer uh just saying I love it it's a game changer chef AJ's right it's a game you just, changer you just got it then because you didn't did. have it the last time I, I talked to you I did I bought one as a housewarming gift for my daughter because we went out and helped her move and it right. was, she didn't have air conditioning and I said, oh, you need to have an air fryer. So she loves it. I yeah. do. What did you get? What, what fryer did I you get? I got the one that was recommended by JL Field. And I can't remember the brand, but I bought it on Amazon. I'll tell you later and you can put it up on the screen, but she okay. loves it. Well, I bought yeah. the Phillips. The Phillips has underneath ways that the air travels up. Mm -hmm. So it's a unique patent. So mm -hmm. I don't know if the other air fryers have them below where uh, the net or where you're sitting right. your food on. But the Phillips has the angles, which changes the angle of airflow mm -hmm. so that it's going around the food, I think, mm -hmm. a little more efficiently. And the Phillips was able to get up to temperature. Well, the one that I bought daughter was was one that was recommended by, I think her name is J.L. Fields. And she had an she interview. She a cookbook. She's got a cookbook and she was interviewed by Victoria Moran. And so I was out walking one day listening to my podcast and I decided that that, that was the air fryer I wanted to get and did a little research on Amazon and looked at reviews. And she has been cooking with it for three days now. I think she just got it. And she said the potatoes are awesome. They are. Oh, oh. my God. I'm the French fry queen. I haven't gotten yeah. past French fries yet. So she, she did. Um, I think she did broccoli and she said it was great. Not too dry. She said there was enough moisture in it. It tasted like a roasted, roasted vegetables. So okay. I, I, I'm living through my children. Do we do that? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. All right. So Kim, I know you got your Instant Pot out. Yay. I do. What are you I making do. today? And, yeah, I want to show people how to make yogurt because there's a yogurt button on the newer versions. And so many people don't know how to make yogurt. And I didn't for the longest time. And I don't. So I'm, I yeah. can't wait. I can't wait my, to see this. My sister-in-law, Leanne Campbell, she wrote the China study and she was really passionate about learning how to make yogurt. And so we had somebody that helped us a little bit. But one thing I'm going to tell you is when you make yogurt, the only one I can get, the only milk I can get it to work with is West Soy, which is mm -hmm. unsweetened, not the vanilla. All it has in there is soybeans. And I think that's why, because there's nothing in there that would right. mess up yogurt. So I start with that. And this is about four cups. And I pour it into my Nutribullet blender. Mm -hmm. and, th and then I use, these are Acidophilus 
Solgar is the brand, and you can put that up for okay. people. And they come in these little tablets that look like this, and you can open them up, and there's a powder in them, and you just put the powder right into the bullet blender. You can put it in any blender, really. But do the to, reason do you have to pull it apart, or you just throw it in? You just you just pull it apart, and the, and the powder comes right out. I don't okay. throw it in. I don't throw in the tablet. I just pull it pull apart. It apart. Okay. I do it, but I've already done it with this. And the reason you want to use a blender is you want to make sure you get it immersed evenly in, mm -hmm. the, in the milk so that it will it won't clump. Because it I did it one time without doing that and just stirred it, and it got really clumpy. So, so four cups of that. Two, I used one. a whole container. Nope. And then I used four of these tablets. Four of those tablets. Okay. So one per cup. Um, okay. Blend it. it up. And then I take these little mason jars and I pour it. And I, I have real tiny ones. And I, I make it about one serving because that's mm -hmm. about what I would have for breakfast. And these are going to be a little bit bigger just because I ran out of the small ones. And then just put it right, you don't have to put a top on it or anything, just leave it open. Put it right into your no Instant way. Pot. Yes, way. When you see this, this is so easy. I love making homemade yogurt. So you put it in there, and, and I usually, usually use these little jars because it uh -huh. takes about a cup. Then put your top on. Wait until you see how easy this is. Seal it. Then go over to your yogurt button. And you can, it's, it's going to 8.30 because that's what I always do, eight, eight hours and 30 minutes. But you can make it more or less. But that is the magic number for my yogurt. The eight long hours? Eight hours and 30 minutes. So you put it in here before you go to bed. Okay. And then you wake up in the morning, it's done. And then I put it in the refrigerator for a while because it, when you put it in the refrigerator, it, it thickens even more as it cools down. Uh -huh. So it's thick when you when you take it out but it's going to thicken even more as it cools so you could start it in the morning okay then put it in the refrigerator before you go to bed but it takes about How eight cool hours is that? the longer you leave it in there the uh -huh. more tangy it's going to get uh -huh. um, if, the, if you leave it in there for seven hours it will be less tangy and then it's going to count up you know how normally it counts down well, right. with yogurt it counts up so i'll look at it in a few minutes, it might say 20. It means it's been in for 20 minutes, and you've got, what, an hour, 10 minutes left to go. So then, so I made this last night, and we got home from our long airplane trip. And I got up this morning, and I put it in the refrigerator. You can see. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Right? So it's really firm. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's a little bit tangy, so if you aren't used to yogurt, you might want to put some sweetener in it. But I'm going to make a parfait, and I'll just put some berries in there, and then put some more of this. Nelson and I eat this for breakfast almost every morning. We put muesli on it and berries, and that's what you got. Oh, my gosh. Yogurt. I'm telling you what, when you figure this out, you will have yogurt every day. And I tried it with almond milk and it didn't work. It uh -huh. separated. It just wasn't as good. And I'm not an expert with yogurt. So anybody out there that knows a better way to make it, please share it with me. Somebody asked me if they could use it without the, the acidophilus pills. You could just go out and buy an active yogurt, like a coconut yogurt or a soy yogurt, and use two tablespoons uh -huh. of yogurt in there and, and it will grow. Because, you know, yogurt's just a fungus. Um, a bacteria, whatever, and and it, it grows beautifully. Well, that but, opens up so many recipes. Uh huh. And you can make dressings with it. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't made this yet with this instant pot. It was a feature that I kept avoiding because I thought, ah, oh, it's too complicated. You know, I've got to, I've got to get these the bright tablets. But my sister-in-law does it too. They do it every day, so it's it's really really nice. Okay. That, yeah. I, wow. I okay. even have a video on it. So you know what? We should post the video right after you post this so that people can see how, how it's made and how easy it is. Okay. It's pretty easy. Well, you're going to send me the link for the video. I will send you the link. It's on Plant Pure TV YouTube. So if anybody wants to go there, they can find awesome. it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. We had the amazing recipe challenge. So how did you come out with your oriental salad? Actually, it came out pretty good. I, I went at this two or three times, Jean. Okay. This is my final. I don't know if you can oh, see it. Oh, that looks it was, great. 
it was my lunch today and this will probably be for dinner too. I tried not to change it a whole lot. I really wanted to, I had to refrain because I wanted to put a lot more stuff in there, but I tried to stick with the recipe that you gave me, Okay. So, which was coleslaw. Right. So I used a, the, you know, the bag, I cheated and I used the bag coleslaw. That's and then what we do. Mm -hmm, two bunches of green onions, used uh -huh. a lot of green onions. The sunflower seeds and the almonds, I did use it. Yeah. But if you wanted to, to skip it and put, you know, red make peppers it, in there, yeah. make it a little bit lighter in fat, you could. Right. And then I used ramen noodles. Ramen noodles are fried, though. So that's a no-no. <laughs> so I went out and I found John McDougal has these little soup, these ramen noodles. Soup oh, awesome. And so, yeah. And I used the seasoning pack. I used the miso one. I used the seasoning pack. I used the ramen noodles. You had to really break them up. So I put yeah. them in a baggie and just pounded on them a little bit. And then I used the package for dressing. And you need to use two of these. There are some other ramen noodles out there that are baked, that are uh -huh. pretty healthy. And they rival the McDougal soup. So, so then. Oh, that's um, perfect. That's just like, almost like the, the original, you know, recipe. Yeah. So. so so the, the oil, the sugar, and the vinegar. Instead of <laughs> What's using, that to like, right? I, I, mean, I know. So instead of using the oil, I used a tablespoon of tahini because that has okay. enough fat molecules that I think it would, it would blend it up. Well, it did blend it up nicely. And then I used rice vinegar, six tablespoons of rice vinegar, okay. half a cup of water, two tablespoons of maple syrup. You could use dates if you wanted to use a whole uh -huh. food. And then I just stuck the, the flavor packs in there right in the blender with it, blended it up and mixed it in. It was delicious. And then I put the, I put the noodles on the top. Okay. Well, we have found, you know, over the time when we were making these, the unhealthy one, that mm -hmm. if you let it sit in the mm -hmm. overnight, that the flavors, it's even, better. it's even better the next day, that the flavors oh. meld together before you, and we would take it and we would have the, we have the coleslaw and mm -hmm. all the other stuff in a separate bag. And then have the ramen noodles separate in another little bag. And then when we got to where we were going, then we would mix it right there. But we put so all the, the dressing in a jar. So then we mix the dressing that, Mark. but we put the dressing, we made the dressing like the night before. So it Mark. had a chance, the flavors had a chance to blend together. You, you know what though? I'm going to warn people that the pad thai, uh -huh. they use brown, they, he, he used rice noodles in it. Rice noodles aren't going to do the same thing because we did it the first time with rice noodles and they stick to your teeth and they have to kind of soften. So make sure you use whole wheat noodles. Okay. Good to know. Good to uh, know. No, it's a great recipe. You gave me an easy job. I gave you an easy job. <laughs> well, I stuck with the, because I was not happy with the way the country chicken pasta bait came out. Uh -huh. So this time I looked at the picture. <laughs> That's always helpful. <laughs> Very helpful. So I looked at the picture this time, and I think I did it. I came out with this. I made this this morning, um, oh, and I actually goodness. filmed it. Um, so I think I nailed it this time. I really nailed it. What a colorful plate, too. Look at that plate. Looking at that plate, right? So many colors on it. Eating yeah. from the rainbow. Yep. Eating from the rainbow. Nice. But so one of the things that I did. Let me put that down. The country chicken, it was a, a Betty Crocker recipe that you gave me from your stash. I love Betty books. Crocker. <laughs> of your cooking magazines. They were great. Yeah, there, oh, there they are. <laughs> There's just some of them. Okay. Your sickness, you know. Mine spices. <laughs> Mine spices. I got to go through and clean. I got to go through and edit yeah. my spices because it's, you know. Anyway, so it was basically, you know, I took the noodles and I used, it obviously in paste the chicken, I used the butler soy curls and I hydrated the butler soy curls. And then I made my gravy because the, they required a chicken gravy. And I'm like, yeah, no. Okay. So my gravy recipe, I used three quarters of a cup of raw cashews that had been soaked. I used one medium potato. Actually, I used about a potato and a half. Uh, with the skin intact, I mean, I just cooked it from my starches going. yeah to get the starches going. Then I used a one can of white beans, and for you know just to add a little bit thicker consistency to the sauce, I used a tablespoon of white or, or the white miso paste to give it a little little tang. I used a quarter cup of white wine vinegar, and one and I used some veggie broth just to add a little bit of, of and I put all that in the blender. 
And yeah. I love the fact that you use white beans too. A lot of people don't think about white beans, but they do really carry flavor and they're such a nice thickener. They are. And it, and it was perfect. The, and when you're putting it into the blender, you have to add a little bit, you know, I started with a half a cup of uh, veggie broth, but I ended up adding more and more and more, you know, as it went through. So just to give it that right consistency, but it's all, you can always start with less liquid yeah. And then, you know, it depends upon how much potato you're using and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a little paint. trick for that. Fill up your your um, measuring cup to a cup and a half and then just kind of pour it in. And if you're recording recipes like I'm always doing, then you'll uh, know exactly how much you used. That's a good and I know I know you record your recipes. So I, I do, know. but I didn't try that trick. So <laughs> I'll to try it yeah. next time. So that was that one. Um, so that was good. I think uh, I think I nailed it this time. So. I will post it on my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, do subscribe. I will also post it on uh, Plant Pure TV. Mm -hmm. So uh, the That's rest exciting. will be there. So yeah, um, let's oh, talk. Yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about traveling and dining oh. out. Traveling and dining out. So okay, I'll start because you know I want to go off on this. Thing. I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> we went out to out to the West Coast nine days ago, and to help our daughter move, and yeah. we ended up all over the place. We stayed in different locations, but I tell you what, Jean, on about the fifth day I had had it. I, I, I get so tired and I, I, I think other people feel this way. I get so tired of having to ask for something vegan and could you leave the, out the oil? And then, you know, the whole thing, Nelson takes out his phone and we're looking for vegan restaurants and healthy restaurants and restaurants where you can customize things. On about the seventh day, I said, I just want to go home. We got so hungry one night because we had skipped a meal and the meals before that weren't so great. You know how hotel breakfasts are. Mm. And we went to, a, I'm not going to name any names, but we went to a very well-known vegan restaurant, a chain, and everything was so oily and rich that I, I was at the point where I was just hungry and I didn't care what I ate. So I sat down and I probably ate a thousand calories in one sitting and probably most of it was oil. And I went home and I was sick to my stomach and Nelson didn't feel good. Uh, and it well, just, you, you, had, you had another trip that you had stopped at a, a basic big chain. Mm -hmm. And what happened to Nelson? Yes, we went to a, a, a chain and we got a salad and the dressing, it was one of these salads where they just keep bringing more back to you. And we thought the dressing didn't have any cheese in it. It didn't, it would taste like Italian dressing. And I assured him that it probably didn't have any cheese in it because Nelson gets very bad migraine headaches if he has any kind of cheese, particularly hard aged cheeses like mm. Parmesan. And he got a migraine that, I think it was that night or the next morning, he was really hurting. Um, wow. So we won't be doing that again. But you really do. You have to ask for yeah. the ingredients, especially if you have something, you know, like what Nelson has, where you really have a reaction to that. I don't, I don't react that way. But um, I really feel for people who travel, you know, 50 weeks or 40 weeks out of the year, because we came back after nine days. And I, I, all I want to do is just eat, you know, potatoes and spinach and, and carrots. And lettuce. Well, Chef AJ and, travels with her Instant Pot and her I air fryer. Know, I, I, I would do that too. It's said, very difficult. I like with the, in the interview, I'm like, do you have a carry-on just for these guys? I mean, do you, do you roll through the, you know, I can see her at yeah. the airport with just, a, yeah. you know, a bag just for the, the pot. Yeah. But well, we went to the hotel and they didn't have any, they didn't have any oatmeal that wasn't loaded with sugar. There's, yeah. there's no plant-based milks. There's no soy milk. So I guess what I don't understand is I know things are changing and they are changing and I'm going to try to be positive, but we still have a long, long ways yes. to go yes. when these yes. chain hotels yes. and restaurants are not serving more plant-based meals. Well, my husband and I just went up to Burlington, uh, Vermont, which is, you know, it's supposed to be the V, you know, like a, one of the, a very big vegan uh, town. Mm -hmm. And we found a couple of, of vegan restaurants, but again, what you said, you know, they're usually use a, a lot of oil, a lot of salt. Uh, we found a, a, a Thai restaurant, which was able to make it and we had, you know, without oil, without salt. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome. It was really great. But, and I share your pain of, of, cause every meal, and even my husband, he gets to the point where it's just, I can't stand it, you know, going out and begging people to, to prepare <laughs> food, you know, that's not, you know. Yeah you know, that's, that's not, not going to cause us to get sick. I remember for me, one time we went out to a restaurant and I got a black bean soup, black bean soup. 
I made sure that there was no oil because it was low fat. It was vegan, so no animal products. And I had a cup, a cup, a cup. I had a cup. I had the worst blood pressure headache that I had ever had. Well, it was probably loaded with sodium. Oh my God. And I didn't, it, it didn't taste salty. It didn't taste salty. But I went and I uh, looked at, I looked at my phone and looked up the ingredients in it. It had 56% of your daily nutritional requirement for salt. That's probably yeah. more salt than I ate in a month. Yeah. You're not used to it. I'm not. Yeah. And, it, mm -hmm. and, and my blood pressure, I, I get blood pressure headaches. I'm one of the, yeah. the rare people that actually have headaches from that. And I had one of the worst ever, ever, ever from that. And it took me a but while you know, to, to get that out. When you get hangry, we call it hangry in our house, there's no telling what you'll do, it's right? True. I mean, that's where it's we true. were at. We were just so hungry. I didn't care if it came on white bread or what. I, I just needed to eat because right. I you know, my blood sugar was right. dropping. So I think that, and you know, Nelson loves to eat and he can Don't definitely- know. Yeah, but he can eat all those f foods that put pounds on me almost instantly. And I mean, he, it doesn't seem, you know, he's, he's over it. Whereas I'm five pounds up now. So I've got to figure out how to, how to take that back off again. Okay. But okay. I don't have, I don't have his metabolism at all. Well, one of the great finds we found in Burlington, and I can't remember the name of the co-op. I'll look it up. But it was a, it was a co-op. It was a, a, like a Whole Foods. They didn't have any Whole Foods in that town, but it was a mm -hmm. co-op Whole Foods. Right kind of place it was awesome that's great and, and we went there and they had a, a breakfast bar so they had a big pot of just oatmeal no yeah. just oatmeal water and oatmeal done and they had a, a little you know setup that you could put whatever you wanted on it you know sugar right. brown sugar raisins right. you know, nuts and whatever then they had a bar over there with uh, different milks you know soy milk almond milk cashew milk had a bunch no, of those things. Wonderful. And yeah. we and we they had another bar that you could make sandwiches. So obviously, you know, the the wraps are gonna have oil in it. You, you know, you have to you have to draw your line in the sand someplace. Yeah. So we got the wraps, but we had the guy made them veggie wraps and just put a little bit of, of mustard on it and that was perfect. So we mm -hmm. packed those for lunches and we you know took made picnics and then we went back for dinner. They didn't have as good of choices, you know, because everything had oil in it, you know, for the most right. part. They had a couple of dishes that didn't uh, mm -hmm. have oil, but you know, apart from that, you know, it was awesome. It was really, it's really the, good. And oil is always the last thing that people give up and restaurants give up. Right. But but you right. nailed it right, right there. And we, we ended up going to Whole Foods several times because I can customize my food there. Yes. I yes. can read the ingredients. And, and, and we, we did it several times. In fact, we did it last night on the way home because I was so tired. But finding Moe's and Chipotle's and Subway and Quiznos, because you can tell them what you want in your food. Right. I right. think when you, if you're looking for those restaurants, look at, look for things that you can customize with. Well, I like going to Wendy's because um, they have a baked potato yeah. and I get, yes. I love baked potatoes and I'll get like two baked potatoes and they do have a fat free dressing, dressing there, not the best. So if you can just bring your own dressing, fine. And then right. we get the salads and they have like a strawberry, whatever salad and you know, with chicken, mm -hmm. the chicken goes home to the dog, you know. Mm -hmm. She's happy. We're happy. That's a, good, that's a good idea. Yeah. So that's a great, you know, when we're on the road to go to Wendy's, you know, and I usually carry around like the uh, Maple Grove Farms has wonderful fat-free. They you know, do. There, there, there's some chemicals in it, but when you're traveling, it's mm -hmm. it's great to just have that. Then I'll, I'll take it into the restaurant and I usually carry a cooler. We're, you know, we're on the road. You know, it's usually by car. And we, had, we usually carry a cooler with us. So I'll put that back into the cooler and, you know, onto the That's next. That's what we did. That's what we did. Um, we just packed things in bags and coolers and we had a car yeah. most of the time. So you can definitely snack and, and do that. Right. Um, right. But, but yeah. Right. I, I guess it was just the stress of being away from home for nine days and not being in the kitchen and being able to. It is. Food, it, so. is. it is. It yeah. is. I love to go out to eat too. I love to go out to eat because I love the social part of it. Right. Um, but nine days in a row was a bit much for me. <laughs> it, it was, you know, and I, I was happy to get back home too after, after our vacation. I mean, the first place we stayed in had a little kitchen, had, mm -hmm. you know, a stove and they had cooking utensils and things. And I brought food and basically, cause I knew we were going to be in a place that had a kitchen. So I brought yep. enough food that I could just heat it up. Mm -hmm. So that worked out really well for the first three days. So we ate pretty much in the in our hotel room, 
And that That's was nice. great. So that was, yeah, that was really nice. nice. That was a nice yeah. thing. But I also like going to like Panera. Panera, uh, if we're on the road, Panera has a Mediterranean veggie sandwich, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, and I usually, but the, the hummus does have oil in it. So I usually get it without the hummus. And I just have them put the brown mustard and the veggies and the, and the bread. So See, I, I, I've had that same sandwich, but I don't have the discipline to tell them to leave the hummus out. Because <laughs> the hummus sort of makes the sandwich. So I know. But yeah. I know it's going to have the oil and I know it's going to have the salt. So yes. for me, I have to really, really yeah. be super, super careful uh, mm -hmm. about that. So mm -hmm. that's that's our compromise, you know, on the road. And I can always get that. And they always, they, they do have some good salads, but I just get it without mm -hmm. the meat. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah. But anyway, you know, let's change conversations because. We, we could talk about that all day. <laughs> we could, we could, no question. I come across stuff. I'm always at like Bed Bath and Beyond, or I see things on Amazon. And I go, oh my god, that I've got to have that. I've got to have that. So, do you have some of those in your house, Kim? Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> Am I the we only through, one? We, so we were at the Seattle, the big market. They have a big, big kitchen store, and I right. said to Nelson, "Just give me five. <laughs> and I went in, and he stood outside the door, thinking, "Oh, I know what he was thinking. Oh, here she goes. She's going to buy a gadget." <laughs> But yes, I do have those. <laughs> okay. So let me show you the first one. This one, I had to have this one. I had to have this one. This was, do you have one of these? I do. I do. I, but I like mine. I don't I use do it too. a lot, but I, I like well, it. I do too. And, and when I use it, I have to take it off. It sits on top of my refrigerator. It's, and I have to go. It's the dare now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I have to blow it off because the dust accumulates because I only use it, you know, like once or twice a year. When you're uh, trying to impress somebody with uh, your spirals, yeah. Exactly. So I just had to have that. Um, let me show you another one. This one uh, over here. I saw this one. Oh, this is going to be great. Look at this. You know what? I saw that in the kitchen store last week, and I almost bought it. And I went, this is going to be awesome. Where does it go? It sits in my drawer. Yeah. <laughs> We're done. You can, use a, you can use a knife to do the exact I know. Thing. I know. Yeah. So I don't know what I was thinking, but it was like, yeah, we're, we're done with that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's in my drawer and it sits there and I haven't taken it out since, you know, yeah. I used it once. We're done. How yep. about you? What do you got? Well, you know what? I'm really good about getting rid of stuff. Um, I'm, I'm not a pack rat. Um, so the two things I'm going to tell you about, I got rid of. And, and the first thing is the Yonana machine. And I okay. know a lot of people out there have one and they're great and they love them and that's great, but I don't need one because I've got a food processor a and I've got a Vitamix and a yeah. blender. And so it just sat there and sat there and I got rid of it, but my daughter saw it in the back of the car. So she has it now at her apartment. I don't think she uses it. Though. <laughs> yeah, um, it's one of those things you got to have and you go, oh, that's cool. That is cool. And but then, then the it sits other, there. Exactly. And the other one we got when we were first married, we had no money, lived in a little apartment. I was making $14,000 a year teaching school and we had to have a pasta maker. We were both hungry and we bought this really expensive, two, at the time it was a lot of money, $200 for a pasta maker. And we did use it. The kids loved it and it was kind of fun. I just got rid of that too because I just, I just don't make pasta for the two of us. Yeah. And then the last one, um, was a Christmas gift for the kids because they love to make sandwiches. This has been up, the, up. It's a sandwich maker. Oops. It's a sandwich maker. Sorry. Um, and so you put the bread in there and then you fill it and you put your sauce in there. And it, it does. It makes really nice filled sandwiches. Um, it's a toast, toast master. And I keep thinking, wow, I should use that. But again, it's probably all filthy on the top. But I, um, you never use it. It's just one of those things. Does it sit on top of the refrigerator too? And you have to blow it off the dust? It's way in the back in a cupboard on top of the refrigerator. Okay. Yeah, along with my waffle iron. But yeah, I mean, I, those things I'm not going to get rid of because someday I might use it again. Oh, no. My <laughs> waffle iron, I use that several times a week with my potato waffles. OMG. Yeah. yeah. I could eat those. And I actually have company coming over, my family, uh, some of my, my you know, people. Uh, the, the carnivores are, are coming. So I'm making the, the potato waffles. That's one of the things that I'm going to make uh, Del Shroof's black bean corn pancakes. You know, you put uh, guacamole and salsa on top that of that. Good. So that's because they're coming over for brunch. So that's what yeah. I'm going to make for, for brunch. But I'm going to make the potato waffles. And I've got it down now where they're, they are so crisp. That wow. once I cook them in the in the waffle iron, then I put them into the toaster oven and crisp them. 
And you could p literally pick them up and go Ang! and bite into them. They're that crispy. I know. After you said that, we tried it again, and it was an absolute mess. So I, <laughs> I guess I'm the wrong waffle maker. Give so. that one to your daughter. And That's true. One. Give the bad, give the bad one. ones to the kids, right? right. <laughs> they have a lot of my, my gadgets in their apartments. So, yeah. Okay. So, Kim, we're about running out of time. So we'll just leave with uh, some resources. What, what, okay. what, what do you got for me today? I have this great book. It's called The Vegan Cheat Sheet. And the foreword was written by Dr. Esselstyn. Ah. And there's, it's, not, it's not just a cookbook. It's about all sorts of things, how to eat out. They, they tell you what fast food restaurants to, to go to, what to order. She has oh. substitutions, shortcuts, just kitchen tidbits that if you like what we're doing, you'll definitely like The Vegan Cheat Sheet. Um, oh, so nice. I highly recommend that, especially okay. if you brand new to this. It's a great resource. Okay. And my second resource is, and you can see because I had to put it in a binder because it got used so much is the Arrowhead Mills cookbook. And it was one of my first like really tried and true vegan cookbooks that I had. Okay. Doesn't use a lot of oil. There's a great pantry list. Um, uh, there's also a glossary of, you know, ingredients and explains to you what they are. I can't say enough about this cookbook. It's probably one of my favorite. I've never heard of it. Arrowhead Mills. Um, I don't even know if you can find it at the bookstore now, but my mother-in-law used it. And then, but it, look, look how much I used it. I mean, it, literally the binder fell apart. So, and this was, some of this was inspiration for the Plant Pure Nation cookbook as well. So oh, nice. That. Nice. Okay. So what are your favorite resources? Well, I just finished reading it, and, and it's funny because I take the covers off of the, my books, you know, when the hardcover books, yeah. and, and I couldn't find it. Because I, I take it off because I when I read a book, I read a book. I mean, yeah. I get into it. I, bind, I bend the binding. I mark up pages. I highlight, you know. Mm -hmm. So I get into it. So I can't find the cover. <laughs> so, but this is uh, Dr. McDougall's The Healthiest Diet on, on the Planet. And I just love uh, one of the things he has in, the, in there, and I know he has it on his website, but it, he, he included it here too on the, I love this. And, it, it, and I know it's backwards, but I'll put, I'll post maybe a picture of it or something like that. Uh, but he has these um, eat lots of, and they're red light, green light, you know, yellow oh, light. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So he has this idea of oh, the, visual. It's a very visual. So he has, uh -huh. you know, eat lots of, these are green light, eat lots of these. These are red lights. No, we don't eat any of these anymore. And then mm -hmm. the yellow lights are caution, you know, things like, you know, something like, like nuts, you know, seeds, avocados, sure. you have to be careful with those. But I just love his, his simple take on this. And he really goes into a lot of detail about this and, and how, you know, we can, cause we can't, we, we just can't sustain what we're doing. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the movie, like Cowspiracy, things like that, we yeah. just can't sustain it. So, and I just, and of course, you know, Dr. McDougall's, I just, he's one of my mentors. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know. we all like Dr. McDougall. Yeah, I, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So um, another one is a, a website. I love, absolutely love the brand new vegan, uh, Chuck Underwood. Yes, yes. I so I love, I, yes, yeah. yeah. And I love it. And I, oh my God, his barbecue wings, cauliflower wings. <gasps> My God, yeah. to die for, to die for. Yeah, I so, to that website. It's a good, it's a good resource. Yeah. No, it's a great, right great resource. So I love that one, and uh, and I like listening to like Chef AJ her her mm -hmm. weight loss Wednesdays because, in mm -hmm. all her interviews, she's just really, I, I you know, because I'm out walking, I'll take, I'll listen, I'll, yeah. you know, I'll I'll download it. Or I'm cooking. I'm in the kitchen. I'm always have something I'm listening to in the background because I don't. I can't handle TV anymore. I just can't. Yeah. I just can't. But yeah. and, and I'm do, always I learning. Huh? I do that too. And you know, she's a she's inspirational for people trying to yes. lose weight and management. Yes. But she's also a, a really good chef too. So she's oh got my God things yeah. going on. So well, and somebody yeah. also sent me. Uh, from one of the from one of our viewers was a video because we had talked about making or using vegetable veggie broth mm -hmm. in in our last show, and so she sent me this link. I'll post it down below, but she sent a link to her videos on how to make these veggie broths, and it, so I, and I checked it out, and she's you know it, it's great, and we don't need to get the the expensive veggie broths. I did, it's it's done you for don't. convenience. I hardly for ever certainly. buy veggie broth. Yeah, I, you can make it. You can use water. Right. You know, you don't have to go that route. Exactly. Yeah. So I hear you have a challenge for me. I do. 
I do. Uh-oh. So I had so much fun this morning because I got out all my books. I got a lot more in there, but um, oh my god, everybody okay. needs to know that Jean is an awesome cook. And I looked at this and I thought Jean can do this. It's called smoked salmon potato gratin, and it's from smoked of course, Betty. salmon. <laughs> it's from Betty Crocker. Um, <sighs> But but it, it's it's basically I love um, scallop potatoes. Uh-huh. So I think it's scallop potatoes, and I know you said you use liquid smoke now and then. It has leeks and butter in it, but you can do leeks without butter. And it has flour and half and half. Okay. Um, and, so and what are you suggesting I use for the salmon, dear? Well, you know what I'm thinking. Well, I should see what you're what you what you'll do. But I'm thinking if you use some some nori sheets in here. You just forget the salmon, and then you could even use soy curls, or just completely leave it out altogether. Maybe use some mushrooms um, for that okay. texture. But I, I, I think that you could nail this, <laughs> and I gave it to you because I know that you can do it. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I, I, I forgot to get one for you, but you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to call my sister and see what other family recipes. Because now we got the the date nut bread, we got the oriental salad. Let's see what else I can dig out of our our no no dessert archives. No desserts, please. After that nine day trip, there will be no desserts in my house for a while. <laughs> That's the that. reality. I hear yeah. that. Yeah. Well, Kim, always a pleasure. So, yes, it was nice chatting with you too. And, and oh, and make sure if anybody has comments or you know feedback, we love to hear it. So, and we'll put it into the next video. So yeah, do we'll comment. Just make, yeah, we'll just build that into the, the program. So it'd be fun. Or if there's something you want us to cover or, hey, I got this idea for your show, please. We're, we're, sometimes we're running out of ideas and, and we're like sitting there going, okay, what else do we talk about, Kim? So, yeah. Anyway. Well, the big wide world of food, there's always things to oh, talk about. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we could never, <laughs> we could go on forever and ever for sure. Yeah. I know. All right. Well, it was really nice chatting with you, yeah. and I look forward to the next time. All right. Well, I'll see you soon. Bye, Jean. Bye.